After spending 12 days in a parallel channel, Bitcoin has finally broken above $53,000. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what this move means and the potential for a correction, as well as my macro expectations moving forward. Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess and as the channel name suggests, it's all about crypto, trading and technical analysis. So if you're all about that or you'd love to learn, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Okay guys, so diving right into the charts, we can see straight away here on the 4 hour time frame that Bitcoin has had a crazy morning. So we broke above that level of resistance here at $53,000 and shot right up to that next level at $57,500, which is about an 8% move for Bitcoin. If you guys were in my Telegram channel, um, you would know that upon this break of this higher time frame RSI, starting all the way back here, we would have a move above that 53k level. And that is exactly what we saw. So on that break of the RSI, we saw that rally. And so naturally, the next question is, where is the next level of resistance? Um, are we going to see a correction and where are we going to go up to if we continue this move upwards? Okay, so to answer all of those questions, the very first thing we need to know is where is our next level of resistance? So if we zoom out a little bit onto the weekly chart, I did think originally that the level of resistance was at $58,000 to $60,000 because of these candles here. But if we pull up the VRPV, we can actually see that the start of that range is on the peak of this VRPV at 56,200. And then the top of that resistance is obviously at that psychological level of $60,000. So we don't have a lot of data obviously within this range to suggest um, 60K being a level of resistance, but obviously we know also that it is a whole number. And generally those whole numbers, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 60,000 become these levels of resistance, first of all, because people sell at those levels. Um, we generally encounter a big sell wall that we have to push past and pushing past that sell wall when we reach that $60,000 or break above that $60,000 is a psychological bullish trigger point. You know, you hear, oh my God, $60,000, we're going to go 100K next. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, so after that $60,000, we've got the next level of resistance and that is the all time high range. So we've got the candle close at 50, uh, sorry, $65,000 and the top of that candle wick being 69k so if we continue upwards from this rally here and move into this resistance range that is the next level of resistance and upon that we have the all-time high so obviously while that's all really exciting we want to know right now whether or not we're going to see a correction back to the downside before we get that continuation upwards Hey guys, I'm just really quickly interrupting this video to tell you that my VIP channel has officially launched. VIP is a Telegram based channel that gives you exclusive access to my personal trades, at least three of them a week with exact entry points, stop losses and targets, detailed trade justifications and risk returns and a complimentary risk management and trading journal. In the last three months, I took 70 trades in total with a win rate of 74% and a profit to loss ratio of 6.8 to 1. You can find all the results of my last three months of trading on my website justdoescrypto.com including profits and losses and contact me down below using the link in my description or by pressing this button on my website. Thanks guys let's get back to the video. So to answer that question we've got to zoom in a fair bit onto the shorter time frames. So we know that on a daily chart we have had that candle close above $53,000 so we know already that this move is in a deviation. We're not going to see a flash crash back below $53,000 and a continuation within that range. So daily chart we've got that candle close things are looking quite good. If we go into a 30 minute chart we actually get a little bit of a picture of what our trend line looks like. So the start of our trend line is at this I guess $51,000 level. We have our second validation point here at $54,600 and our third validation here at $56,000 I think or $55,700. So let's just draw that in really quickly. So here is our short time frame trend line. And so as you guys know, if you're in the trend line, you want to continue going upwards. If the trend line is upwards, we're going to keep going upwards. If the trend line is downwards, it's natural to assume that we're going to keep going downwards. So in this scenario, it is natural to assume that while we remain above this uptrend, we should continue going up until we have a break of this short time frame uptrend. Um, it would be safe to assume that that would continue onwards. What we can see, though, is on the 30 minute chart, we are starting to see just a little bit of weakness. So we did have this rejection, that candlewick rejection back down to this $56,000 level. And obviously we have this bearish engulfing candle right here as well. And we, I guess we went sideways and luckily we found support on that trend line validation point. But 
on the shorter time frame, so on the 30 minute chart here, if we don't have a candle close above this level of short time frame resistance anytime soon, maybe we might start to see that rejection begin. So if we get a candle wick above and a close below or just a wholehearted rejection from this level, what we'll end up forming is a double top. So that is a very bearish formation and it is just um, two tests of the same level of resistance and a rejection both time and when that both times and when that happens it is a pretty much an immediate move to the downside and so not only will we have formed a double top but we will also lose our short time frame uptrend so in that scenario let's talk about the short time frame supports very first level of short time frame support is we ha is this level of consolidation here so it starts at 54400 and ends at 54800 so that is this little red box i'll just draw it in and that is our short time frame level of resistance. So if we do end up having a rejection from this little level here and we go back downwards, or even if we just don't even touch that level, even if we just <laughs> reject from the uptrend, we'll end up testing this level of, resist of support. And then right below that, we have this level here at $53,000. So if we lose the base of the support here at $54,400, we know that we will continue downwards and that next level of support is all the way down at 53K. Now, do I think that a rejection is imminent? Not necessarily, because while I do think that there will be a rejection at some point, we might not see it just yet. We might, as I said, continue on in this uptrend and we might actually correct all the way down to just this level here at $58,000. So there's two main scenarios. First of all, we need to, at, at some point, at any point of resistance on a high time frame, any sort of macro resistance or strong resistance, when we break above it, we need to see, first of all, a macro candle close. We've got that daily candle close. And then we also need to see a flip of that uh, level of resistance from a resistance to a support. So that can either happen at, that can happen at two places, but that can happen at $53,000 or at $58,000. So what we might get is a rejection from this level of resistance here. And at that point, we'll flip 53 from a level of resistance to support. Or if we continue upwards and test the next level of resistance at $60,000, we will test $56,000 here as a level of support. So there needs to be at some point a flip um, but it will be at either of these two levels. So it's definitely really important that we watch this trend line and see where we end up finding that level of support. But as of right now, it does look okay just as long as we get that candle close above this little level here. Okay, so now that the short time frame analysis is out of the way, let's really quickly dive into BLX to talk about what this break of $53,000 actually means. So Every single four year cycle, we get the same kind of price action, right? So even though like the different price levels, it's the same trends every single time. And so generally what we see leading up to a halving event is we start to get a, these tests of a bull run trigger point. And these trigger points are created within the bear market and they're essentially formed by this dead cat bounce level. And you guys would know all about it if you've watched my previous videos, but that small bounce ends up going to create such a strong level of resistance that when we break above that level within the next cycle, we generally go on to have our bull run. It becomes a bull run trigger point. So usually we don't actually get a break of that level until after the halving event. But this time we've got our halving event in about two months and yet we've broken above that level already so if we get a candle close in the next two days or two days and 17 hours so technically three days we should get a early bull run right and generally what i like to use to test whether or not this is a real break above that level is ichimoku so if you pull up the baseline and conversion line you guys can see that over here in 2019 when we had a break of that bull run trigger point and the conversion line was still below the baseline we actually ended up falling right back below that bull run trigger point and going back down again and retesting it later. So basically it tells us whether or not it's going to be a real break above that bull run trigger point. So if we have a look here, we've actually had that flip. So our baseline is that red one here and we've actually had that flip from the conversion line above the baseline as we break above our bull run trigger point at $48,000. So if we get that candle close above 48K, which we are really likely to do because 48K would be a like nearly 20% move away if we go all the way down. So I really don't see that happening in the next three days. So it's very likely that we do get that candle close. When we get that candle close, 
we should begin our early bull run technically, right? And so usually when we have that bull run, it is around 80, 183 days after the halving event that we test our all time high. And that happens every single cycle over here. We have a halving event, 184 days later, we have the test of our all time high. Same thing over here. We have halving event and then 184 days later, we have our very first test of that all time high level. So if we pull that around here, we shouldn't get our test of all time high at $69,000. Um, until October. But if we draw in a little trend line, let's say we go back down to $53,000 as a level of support over the next three days, and we test our all time high in 184 days after the halving event, that gives us a trend line like that. And to me, that doesn't really suggest bull run trend line. It's a little bit too flat. Even, in, even during the accumulation phase, we had a steeper trend line than that. So I really don't think that that is what the price action is going to look like. If anything, I do think that it's going to reflect the similar trend trajectories that we've had in the past. So for example, if we take this one, they're literally the same, by the way. So if I copy and paste that over here, it's literally the same. After the halving event, we have the exact same trend line trajectory to that all-time high area. So if we drag that across and we pop it at $53,000, let's just quickly draw in a, a line so I can see where I'm going. We can see that we should expect a test of our all-time high just after the halving event. So around May, or maybe just a little bit before May, we should get a test of our all time high. So that gives us a vague timeline of when we should expect to see $69,000. Whether or not we break above it is to be seen, because um, over here, obviously, we had that rejection. But there we have it. We know when we're going to see that next level of resistance. There you have it, guys. Those are my thoughts on the short time frame price action of Bitcoin as well as the macro trajectory moving forward. Definitely a couple things to keep your eyes on. So obviously we have that 30 minute chart uptrend. Um, when we lose that uptrend, we might get a little bit of consolidation back downwards. Um, and obviously, even if we don't get a rejection from that $56,000 level, we do need to see a correction at some point. So whether or not we find support at $53,000 or at $56,000, there needs to be a point where we flip rejection, uh, where we flip resistance resistance to a level of support. Um, and then obviously keep your eyes out for that three or that monthly candle close in three days. If we get that candle close above $48,000, that is extremely bullish for Bitcoin and suggests a very early bull run. So that is everything for me. If you liked today's video or you learned something, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And if you want to see more of my content or keep up to date with Bitcoin, I do have a free Telegram channel where I make daily Bitcoin posts as well as crypto and economic news. If you're a trader and you want 15% of your trading fees, sign up down below to BitGet and BingX. They are two of the world's top 10 exchanges and BitGet is available to everyone outside of the US and Singapore and BingX is available non-KYC and worldwide. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye.